This one is called Woke Game Producer Reaps What He Sowed. I'm, not I'm, I'm noticing a, a trend of this title, Reap What You Sow, even in the thumbnail. It's very clickable. It's very like people love that shit. I should start using that shit in my videos too, but hey, let's check it out. Hey, what's up guys up here? So I think okay. it's becoming very obvious over time that there's a great number of people in the gaming industry who have an open disdain of gamers. We recently saw this Reddit post where a game designer claims that they hate gamers and one of the main reasons they is it because they're making trash games and then the players are like this game trash and the devs are like no you just don't understand what's going on why would devs hate gamers site for this is the fact that gamers seem to be rejecting dei and other woke initiatives ah. being forced into their games now one of the funniest consequences of these situations is seeing these people in the industry pushing dei and other woke nonsense just to have that stuff backfire on them and that's exactly what we're gonna it's see like today. um a it's like uh what was it before not even just gaming but remember the other thing they were trying to do live action the gambling anime remember the gambling anime where if you lose you become a slave right kakegurui or something and remember the video that Rev made there where the DEI incentive was to get the main actors, the cast, not to be like Japanese students, but they brought in black people. And there's absolutely nothing with that. But like, if you actually read the material, if you actually know what's going on in the anime, what happens if one of them loses and then gets put in a fucking collar and gets treated as a slave? It's this weird thing of they're trying to be so inclusive and so, you know, LGBTQ pro friendly. To the point where they go to the left end and then they come out the right end. It's like you go so far left that you become racist, you know? A person in the industry reaping what they have sown. So we're going to begin with Dungeons and Dragons, which is obviously All a right. franchise that has been enjoyed by countless people for decades now. However, over the past couple of years, a lot of people have been growing very concerned about the direction of this game because it's developer Wizards of the Coast and the decisions they have been making. For Such really as? lack of any other term, they've been going woke and a lot of people have noticed and it's really crippled. I think the word woke is so fucking cringe, right? It's just pretty much like a buzzword used by like a specific group of people to declare another group of people that you're like... I don't know, you're like a social justice warrior, you're a virtue signaling, or you're fighting on, you know, these social principles that you don't really believe in, and it's just all for the sake of corporations, but in this situation, let's see how woke they are. Some of the lore in the game. In fact, this is a real decision by their development team from only about two years ago, okay. where they removed some monsters like this because they believed it was problematic. What? Now, why is it problematic? Why? What do they got against one-eyed little blobs that can think this is pretty cute to me? Why are you so mad about this? Well, they claimed that these monsters too closely resembled real-life minorities. Huh? Huh? This is what I'm saying! You- You're saying that this looks like a group of minorities? Okay, first of all... I could never even guess what you're talking about. But then, if they say this monster looks like this group of minorities, and we need to get rid of it, like, like, you're just being flat out racist, are you not? You're going so far left that you come out right, exactly right? Yes, these are the progressive people. Now, that sentiment is something that their team has openly shared. That what they the will fuck? cater to the delicate sensibilities of a- Yo, 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 come on! What minority group does that monster represent? Come on, tell me, what? Small number of their players, despite the majority of players disagreeing with those decisions. They don't care about the majority of their fan base. They care about the loud minority of people who are complaining the most. And that is not just a bad decision as a game designer. It is a bad decision whenever you're dealing with customers. You listen to them. Yes, you should. When dealing with people, even like YouTube, completely separate tangent. But like, I never listen to random comments saying, please don't drop Yosakura, please. You know, watch this random ass anime that your community doesn't care about. The loud minorities are always going to be the most vocal. But you just follow the numbers. You give them, people don't know what they want. And in this situation where... <laughs> Basically, a couple people are just like whining. Vast majority of people are it's like cool with D&D. Now you cater towards that vocal minority, your entire brand and product goes down the shithole. 
Because now you don't represent what the majority of people play this game for. You fold into the whims of this vocal minority. Why? Majority, not the minority of people. However, a lot of these bad decisions can be traced back to people like Kyle Brink, who is Anytime you see, you guys can't see that right now. Anytime you see a locked, private Twitter account, you can for sure know that they're trying to hide their shit. They're not proud of what they've made. They said some dumbass shit. Now they got clapped for it. And now they're like, oh no, I'm getting harassed for sharing my woke opinions. I need to get out of here before cancel culture gets me. Who is a former executive producer at Wizards of the Coast. And as you can see, their account is currently private. Now, this person is famous for mm. this quote right here stating this. Mm. There's been mistakes made in years past where people assumed that Dungeons & Dragons players were yeah. all, you know, white dudes in a basement, which has been a faulty assumption for a lot of years. Oh, please. So this guy comes in as like, not a white savior, but like a white apologist where like a white person will be like, I apologize on behalf of my race. D&D &D has been too white supremacist, right? And now we need to open up our diversity quota by getting rid of these, you know, what's it called? The one-eyed monsters that looks like a minority group so that those minority groups will then play D&D. &D. Like, what are you talking about? ...and gets more and more false every day. Yeah. And so in my viewpoint, honestly, guys like me can't leave soon enough for this hobby. So basically- I think, I, I, I think this is one of the most cringe things that I see where like, have you ever seen like really, really woke white people start like apologizing to black people saying like, I'm so sorry for slavery and all that shit that I didn't personally do. And then they start like fucking washing their feet. Like it's all performative. It's like theatrics. And I'm like watching this shit. And I'm like, even the black people are like, what the fuck is this guy doing? But some people, for whatever reason, they, they like, I'm not sure if they honestly feel the guilt within and are then folding or if they're actually just grifting. Maybe they're just farming this shit. I'm honestly so baffled by these people that act as if, you know, being white is the most evil thing ever and those same white people will then go on a crusade, you know, admonishing their own race. It's like, I mean, I know that white isn't a race. It's like a more like a social construct, but it's kind of wild that they do this shit. Their wish is to push out white males from Dungeons and Dragons, which is absolutely crazy. As always, pay attention to these people being featured in videos like this. They almost always are racist towards white people and slash or are self-hating. <laughs> well, actually, Rev, you cannot be racist against a white person because they are the ones that hold power in society. Therefore, racism against white people is okay, but racism against everyone else is bad. That's actually, that is actually the mindset that a lot of people have, though. Genuinely, that's why you see the people throw around the term cracker, right? On Twitch, there was a whole meta of that happening, right? And Twitch actually started to ban people for using that with intent. Because, like, I think that slurs is just bad. You may think not think that word is a slur, but just, like, using a word to, you know, put a specific group of, demo uh, 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 a group of people in a negative light. Like, can we just agree just it's racism bad? Like, I, I, I understand that... White people have a lot of advantages in the Western society. I understand that they pretty much had early beta access. This is, this is how I see it. I think that white people had like early alpha beta access to the game and they got in the game a lot earlier on. And they're so much farther ahead than other, you know, races. And, and therefore like the white standard for beauty and culture and media and representation. That's why I'm so dominated by that. And, and therefore it's like, well, we need better equity and representation of different marginalized, you know, minorities. And in order to get back at the white men, in order for the meta to, in order the meta to shift, you know, we need to like start being racist towards white people. But it just feels so backwards, does it not? White people. It is a very recognizable pattern at this point. But his whole thing is that he wants to see white males pushed out of Dungeons and Dragons. Well, congratulations. You got exactly what you wish for. You're fired. <laughs> yes. This person has been. You get what you fucking deserve. Fired and replaced with a new executive producer at. <gasps> Another white person? Yo, D and D races for sure. They kicked out a white guy and then they invited another white person. Oh man, they're just doing this for the image. Dungeons and Dragons, 
And here she is. And again, you want to get rid of white males in the space. Well, you've been replaced by a female. Now, is she <laughs> going to be a benefit to the franchise? I don't, I don't know. I don't know. I haven't looked into her background or her resume, but he got exactly what he wished for. He was pushing all of this nonsense and it backfired to his own detriment. And speaking of some new hires in the gaming industry, uh -oh. Mary Kenny has landed a new position at CD Projekt Red. Now, for those who don't know, she is the former associate narrative director at Insomniac Games, who is working on the Marvel's Wolverine game. Now, she yeah. is someone we have is that covered be good? before on this channel. She is someone who definitely likes to inject a lot of woke. I wonder who Rev hates more, this person or Katarina, the woke localizer. Woke narratives into not only her job, but the projects that she's working on. And as you can see, she landed a job with CD Projekt Red, which is most okay. well known for games like The Witcher, as well as Cyberpunk 2077. Pretty good games, right? So let's right? learn a little bit more about her, okay? So this headline is not joking right here. She is famous for this quote on Dual Shockers, where she said, we have to pull every lever we have, referring to the injection of LGBT themes and characters. In Everybody is gay. Everybody in this game is gay. That's right, representation. That's how you do representation. You want inclusivity. No more straight people, everyone gay. It's a games. And again, as always with all these things, people aren't mad that there's LGBT characters in games. They're mad when it's clear that this is something to mm -hmm. check boxes or to Exactly, that's the point, that's the point, right? I bet even gay people, I bet even like lesbians, I bet even people that enjoy Yuri, they probably think this shit's dumb, right? They see a movie, they play a game. You ever feel like some characters are just like inserted, they just exist as a token representation? They don't add to the story. Them being gay, them being trans, them being a different race for representation, it adds nothing to the story. They just are. Because it's a diversity checkbox for fucking big corporate execs to be like, you know what? People are saying we racist. What should we do? Hmm. I have an idea. Let's just insert gay people into the story for no fucking reason. For the sake of representation to check a checkbox so that people won't be mad at us. But again, when you do this shit, people can clearly see you don't actually care about the representation. You are just farming the diversity inclusivity thing. Then that's what pisses people off. Thank you, Kirimo, for the tier one sub. I appreciate that, my man. Push some kind of an agenda. That is very clear when people say things like we have to pull every lever we have. We have to use every resource we have to inject more characters like that into games. It seems like it's a very obvious point of agenda. Mm. And she's also someone, as referred to earlier, who was the former narrative director on Wolverine. And I found former. it very interesting that a few weeks ago, she completely wiped her bio. She removed any mention of the Wolverine game. She also removed her pronouns and all those things. And people thought maybe this was on? a step in the right direction. However, we probably now know it's because she was getting ready to be hired at CD Projekt Red. Got like it. I said earlier, we have talked about this individual before. She <laughs> this tweet says, racism here. Let me make this is a little bit better one. Hold on. Racism is systemic oppression by definition by the Merriam-Webster dictionary. White people are not systematically oppressed. It's not possible to be racist to white people. It is possible to be bigoted towards white people. These two things are not the same. Now, I am nowhere near educated or enlightened enough to understand the difference between what it means to be a bigot and what it means to be a racist, truly, I guess, right? So the, the talking point right now, right? The talking point here in the way that you can be racist towards white people, it's fine. Sorry, it's not fine, but like it was never racism from the beginning. This is the mindset that they have. Their win condition is... You guys can be bigoted, but you cannot be racist because they systematically, again, they had beta early access to the game, right? They were so much ahead, they systematically just are on top, therefore, you can't be racist to white people. But you can be bigoted. I... I don't know. Like, I don't study this shit, I don't have a PhD on whatever the fuck kind of topic this is, but I feel like this is just mental gymnastics to justify how you can be cruel to white people for the things that they haven't even committed simply for being spawned in on a, I guess, advantageous race. I, I don't know. I feel like this is just a backwards way of solving things. He is also 
reposted and supported narratives from other members of the industry who claimed that you can't be racist against white people again this pattern unfolding once again with a member of the industry who is woke but on top of that she is the narrative director or the former one for the wolverine game and so did she get fired do you think because she was too woke <laughs> in the wolverine game i wonder besides just the previews of the storytelling that already have people concerned the designs of these characters have people even more concerned because okay. as you can see here jean gray is not looking too good and no this is not is jean gray on the right is she looking a little I would not say I would not say mommy when I see her on screen. That's what I would say. Some botch in Photoshop or something. This is the actual design. Okay. There is no excuse for this in the year 2024. To make a character look like this, it has to be in It's the thing of like intentionally making characters ugly, right? There's some weird thing that game developers are doing where it's like even like oh, there was a bunch of drama with a different game, right? Oh, it was a Korean game. And those girls had some fat asses, and everyone was so happy about it. But then it's like, oh, how dare you make all these girls sexy? You need to make them ugly. How, you, you, you're going to make all the ugly people in the world if you feel bad. You need to make them ugly. So even right here, even right, Stellar Blade, that's the game. That's right, that's right. So even this character, she's intentionally botched to protect some people's feelings about how they look. Intentional. So who's making this? Why would they make a design look like this? Well, things become a lot more clear when you realize that yeah. Insomniac Games, as well as the Wolverine game, hired the consulting Sweet advice Baby. of Sweet Baby. Yeah. And despite the fact that Sweet Baby is private, screenshots like this still exist from 2021 where they announced that they're working with Insomniac Games. On Sweet Baby just doesn't want any of their characters to look hot, huh? They just don't want anything attractive anything looking good no everything needs to look so fucked up for the sake of representation what are, what, what kind of message are they trying to send like like are, are they just saying like our player base is ugly our player base do not look like those big booba waifus and muscular husbandos therefore you need to make them ugly because right now what you're doing is over sexualizing characters and video games and objectifying women and I, I, I just don't understand, like, how you could possibly think this is a good idea. Like, even, like, I think a lot of the talking points before was, how dare you make girls hot in video games? But then other girls were like, yo, they're not objectifying women. Like, other girls also enjoy looking at hot characters. It's not just guys and a bunch of coomers. That's just, like, like big booba wife who's, like, plenty of girls, too. It's just, like, everybody loves that shit. Like, a lot of people do. But these companies really, really have a thing against, like, really super attractive characters and models. There's something so weird about this. On the Wolverine title. And on top of that, Mary Kenny has made it very, very clear that she supports Sweet Baby as well as other narrative consulting firms like them. That's she a red flag, right? She in a 12-part thread on Twitter defending Sweet Baby and their actions. And as always, Sweet Baby is in the shadows, private. still private. They've been private for pretty much a year at this point. And it's <laughs> odd because for a company that claims to be so proud of their work, they sure do like to hide their involvement with their projects. Anytime shit's privated, it's not a good sign usually. They're sitting in the shadows, making sure nobody knows what they're working on. Don't you see the problem there? Don't these game journalists and members of the industry see the issue there? It's very no. blatant, but they don't. No, they're not the problem. We are the problem. We just don't simply understand. Also, I just see a Montreal, Quebec location on this Tweet Baby Inc. tweet or Twitter. That's pretty sad. As a fellow Canadian, I admonish this shit. See the red flags. And to add insult to injury, it was recently discovered that IMDb accidentally leaked all uh -oh. of the upcoming games for Sweet Baby Inc. Okay. That is very embarrassing. Who needs DEI detected or anything like that? when they just do it themselves and other members of the industry do it themselves. But of course, people want to know what Sweet Baby's involved with because pretty much everything they touch ends you want up to being avoid a those massive games. flop and often has to do with the terrible decision making that comes from the consulting advice of Sweet Baby. And of course, like I said, Mary Kenny would announce that she is- Like, why do people hire? Like, like why do people hire Sweet Baby like, to, as consultation? Do they actually have that much authority? Do they just know 
way more about the industry and what needs to be done. Because, like, everything they touch, it just kind of goes into controversy and into shit. Everyone just shits on them. But, like, I, I, I don't understand. Like, why, why are people hiring these dudes fully aware that whatever they touch turns into shit? Is a part of CD Projekt Red. And for a lot of people, that is a very concerning development for that studio. And despite all this, no matter how much evidence continues to mount that these agendas are being supported and pushed in the gaming industry, you'll have people like this claiming it's all a ruse. It's all in your imagination. Your Let's read this. This one says, If you're angry at the game industry for being too woke, I think you're a dummy. If you then fall for the right-wing grift and allow someone to profit off of your anger, the grifter thinks you're a dummy too. Don't be a dummy. Huh. I mean, he's basically just farming both sides then, isn't he? What this guy is saying, listen, you think that these like Sweet Baby Inc. and other games and other woke localizers and game developers, even they're being woke, you're a dumbass because you're falling for the grift. They are farming your anger. So me, so Rev is right now farming, sorry, falling for that grift. But technically, I, I don't know. That's like a dumb way. It's like a logical hack to kind of say like, no, I'm not getting farmed. You're getting farmed, you know? At, at the end of the day, Rev making a video, me farming this shit, the more eyes that's on this kind of topic, more people can come to their own conclusion. I don't think like this argument really necessarily makes sense. You're crazy for thinking these things. And you can see this quote right here saying, if you're angry at the games industry for being too woke, I think you're a dummy. And if you fall for the right wing grift and allow someone to profit off your anger, the grifter thinks you're a dummy too. Don't be a dummy. That is the new excuse for anything that happens. If someone uncovers something going on with DEI or what have you in the industry, they're getting grifted. Immediately the defense yeah. is, well, they're just a grifter. What they're saying doesn't matter. They're a grifter. They just use this as a defense against anything that disrupts their narrative or exposes what's going on in the gaming industry. And it's very obvious how insecure they are about all this stuff. And on top of that, you can see Melanie Mack uh -oh. quoting them saying, you've got to be outright delusional or born yesterday if you can't see the blatantly obvious hijacking of video games by- Based! Melody Mack based! Woke ideology and activists. Where this individual would reply with this saying, I wish I was born yesterday because I'd be a little baby that couldn't use Twitter and I wouldn't know that hateful, low IQ, waste of life, <laughs> shit stains like you exist. I can feel the anger and seething as he's typing on the fucking keyboard. Oh man. Ah yes, a very mature response to this. The second you question any of their narratives, they end up lashing out like this with name calling and things like that. It's Yeah, whenever you're in like an actual argument, like not just drama, just like you're at, you're trying to have a conversation. The moment that the opposition turns into personal insults, you've already won the battle. They they have nothing. They can't you know attack your idea. They cannot attack what you said. So they you know default onto personal insults. It's it's just that easy. It's, it's very childish, but overall, yeah, things aren't looking too great. More concern. <laughs> it's also tiresome. Concerning developments in the realm of the gaming industry, but at least we saw an example of one of these people reaping what they have sown and losing their job in the pursuit of the DEI initiatives that they've been pushing themselves for quite some time. But for now, that's going to do it for this video. I hope you guys all enjoyed. Thank you, Rev. Guys, please go give Rev like on the video. I kind of am orbiting this like woke DEI video game sweet baby stuff. I, I have heard of it. I've seen other people cover it. But it is really interesting to see, like, how video games, even anime, everything is just getting hijacked by DEI and woke activists trying to inject their own sense of representation into medium where people aren't even asking for it. Like, everyone's just happy playing D&D. &D. Some people, and I still want to know what race is supposed to be represented by this thing, right? That sounds so racist to be like, yeah, we're going to remove this monster because it looks like a specific race, you know? a minority group and i'm like what the fuck are you saying that's insanity but I, I think it's just corporations or brands folding at really loud minority groups and making dumb decisions and different consulting groups like sweet baby or other people kind of coming to scavenge and take advantage of the situation and pivoting the product into something that's the original people that played D, &D or these different games came for but that's it from me